The Cell. It is the origin of everything. Understanding the cell means understanding diseases better. A cell is capable of creating a whole organism through cell division, whether for water, where cells become gills, fins, and ampullae of Lorenzini. or for the air, where cells become wings, beaks, and feathers. Or for the land, where cells become feet, hands, and fingers. So let's dive into the universe of the cell and take a brief look at the structure of a simple cell. The complexity of cells is breathtaking and hardly comprehensible. Cells are the smallest living unit of all organisms. In them, mitochondria provide energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. This enables the numerous organelles of the cells, such as the Golgi apparatus, to do their work. Around the cell nucleus, we can see the endoplasmic reticulum, and in the nucleus, we find the chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, a dog 78, and a chimpanzee 48. A chromosome is a continuous strain consisting of DNA and histones. Histones acts as spools around which DNA winds to create structural units called nucleosomes. DNA contains the genetic information of a cell. The cell's code uses four nucleotide bases of DNA. This code makes a shark a shark and an eagle an eagle. In the human uterus of the mother, a new human being is created from a single cell, according to a very specific blueprint stored in the DNA. The DNA determines when how and where the cell divides. Liver cells, heart cells, muscle cells. All cells are given very specific tasks in this network. What one cell can't do, another cell can. And when the new organism is ready to be born, a myriad of cells bring the baby into our world. At this point, the baby's organism consists of about one trillion tiny living things, or one trillion cells, which continue to divide, leading to the organism's growth. The adult human being consists of an estimated 30 trillion cells. From a single cell, humans have countless cells for skin, muscles, bones, blood vessels, nerves, lymph, and organs. Even the simple act of walking requires the complex interaction of all cells. For example, all muscle cells of the skeletal musculature must be controlled by nerve cells. The heart cells pump oxygen and other nutrients via blood vessel cells to all cells of the body. The transport of oxygen is carried out by the erythrocytes, also known as red blood cells. They release oxygen to other cells.
Now, let's see the role of nutrition. The formation of red blood cells takes place within our bones, in the bone marrow. The bone marrow is composed of stem cells, among others, which finally mature into red blood cells with the help of iron, vitamin B12, folate, and many other substances within about eight days. Red blood cells consist to a large extent of hemoglobin. The heme in hemoglobin has an iron ion as its central atom. This iron ion can take up an oxygen molecule and release it when needed. If the iron in our food is missing, microcytic anemia can occur. This means that only a small amount of oxygen is transported to the remaining cells of the body. In microcytic anemia, red blood cells are smaller and have less hemoglobin. However, if folate or folic acid is not supplied through our food, larger immature blood cells are formed, which are less able to absorb oxygen. In the same way, the different cell types in the human body require the same, but also extremely different nutrients to work properly. Folate or folic acid, vitamin C, Biotin, calcium, and iron are just a few of them. From these nutrients or molecules, the cells of our body assemble entirely new substances, such as insulin or gastric acid. This synthesis, breakdown, and conversion is commonly referred to as metabolism. So, all cells must be supplied with certain substances to perform their function. And these substances are found in large part in the plants on our earth, like dandelions. Dandelions flood the body with substances that help stomach cells produce gastric juice. Liver cells use a dandelion's ingredients to produce bile in the proper amount and quality. Dandelion can therefore contribute greatly to a proper digestion. The kidneys also benefit from dandelion, for example, to prevent kidney gravel. One of the ways we supply our cells with important nutrients is through the mouths. These supplied nutrients are metabolized or consumed by our cells. If nutrients are not further supplied, a problem arises, which we call disease in our culture. A severe deficiency of vitamin C is called scurvy. An extreme deficiency of iron is what doctors call anemia. A deficiency of magnesium is called hypomagnesemia. Not only dandelion, but also many other plants contain a lot of vitamin C, iron, and magnesium. For this reason, green smoothies are very popular today as they provide our cells with many important nutrients. Folate, especially important for pregnant women, is also contained in green leaves, hence the name folate from folium, leaf. 
Folic acid is the artificially produced form. The green plant pigment, chlorophyll, is also found here. It is amazingly similar in structure to hemoglobin, which makes up large parts of our blood. Where magnesium is found in chlorophyll, iron is found in hemoglobin. Studies on chlorophyll show positive effects on blemished skin and acne. In addition, chlorophyll is said to show amazing effects on various types of cancer. It is therefore almost always the right move to use green leaves as a source of nutrients, as our closest relatives still do today, and as we did as well, not so long ago. However, caution is advised. Drugs like blood thinners can cause potentially dangerous food drug interactions due to the high vitamin K content in leafy greens. And there are also some plants that can be life-threatening if consumed.